Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, this is Ellie, a medical Qigong practitioner, energy healing coach. And I'm so happy to be here with everybody. Yes, we have Edward, we have Anne, we have Lorraine here, Wendy, Wendy, welcome. <laughs> so uh, it's noon here in California. And we have, uh, we, I started this series, Chi Talk, and every time we choose a different subject. And, um, but really, uh, the purpose of this call is to, to have you ask a question, kind of like open, open a conversation. And it's kind of like a Q&A uh, about how, about everything. So it ha doesn't have to be just limited to the subject that we're talking about today. It could be about anything, anything you want to ask about any healing or any ailments that you're dealing with, anything that you want to just ask a question about, you're willing to do it. I, on my part, so that's the, that's the purpose. It's just to open for a Q&A, for a discussion, and for, um, for anything that you want to know what, um, you want to know, uh, you know, what, how how in energy, from energy perspective, energy healing perspective or traditional Chinese medicine, how we see a certain ailment or you want to get, a, um, um, you know, an idea of, of a different perspective on something. So that's, that's, that's really what this, what I envision this uh, platform to be for. Uh, but we also adding, um, adding a subject. So the subject today will be the heart energy. Yeah, we're in the summer in the northern hemisphere, at least. And uh, it's very hot. And uh, I decided to talk about the heart energy, the heart energy is active in the summer. And this is, uh, and be, be, actually, before we start, and I, I'll tell you some more insight from traditional Chinese medicine about heart energy. Let's uh, open with a little bit of a, uh, a, a little ceremony, if you will, but a little meditation, a little Qigong meditation. So let's uh, start with uh, knocking on the chest, taking deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Yeah, inhale. And taking the, the knocking would be on the sternum bone, on the chest bone. So you can do it with one arm or two, two, two arms, two hands. And let's relax this energy down. Just move it down, all that energy we cultivated here in the chest. Move it down to the lower abdomen and put the hands on the lower abdomen on the navel and rest in this area. So move your attention a little lower to the lower abdomen and see if the breath can follow. Yeah, some Qigong practitioner called this type of breathing back to childhood breathing. Yeah, when a baby born, he's breathing more into this area. Yeah, we said because the umbilical cord used to get all the nutrition from the umbilical cord. So there's a strong connection to this area. And as we age, we lose the connection to this area. And the breath get up, up, up onto the chest. And in Taoism, we say, no, <laughs> go back to the childhood breathing. Yeah, that would nourish your internal organ, massages the internal organs with your breath. And you can see already when you put your mind in this area, you're feeling more grounded and more peaceful. So you're taking the energy from the heart center into a lower area. Yeah, this is area no, we call area, this is the, we call it the powerhouse, an area of uh, vitality, of energy. 
Yeah, if you think about, you know, this is where digestive system. So it's a lot of uh, physical health is being transform transformed into chi here and also sexual energy, yeah. So it's all about vitality, physical vitality, this area. So when you breathe into it, many, many benefits. And we know that when you breathe that deeply, there's more oxygen assimilated into your bloodstream. So feel the top of the inhalation and let the breath be slower, a little slower. So slow breathing and slow inhalation, slow exhalation. Exhale from the mouth. Think about this area. And smile to this area, love this area, appreciate it. Yeah, first come appreciation. Appreciation to your body, appreciation for your processing. Yeah, the digestive system process not only food, but also emotions, thoughts. And by putting our mind there, we can assimilate more experiences. Nice. Let's open the hands to the side, open the eyes. Beautiful. <laughs> it's so nice to connect with your body, you know, and to really energize and calm so easy from within. And, you know, this is why I love this practice. It's just so practical and so easy. And uh, yeah, so the heart. So I did this meditation because uh, we usually, and especially, well, let's talk about the heart. So the heart, few few things about the heart energy, and then we're going to open it to a Q&A, whatever you want to ask again. So uh, the heart is the most important organ in Chinese medicine. It's considered to be uh, a lot of time they call it the emperor or the, the master of all the organs. Yeah, it's, we say that our spirit is in the heart. So the spirit is not lives here, right, in the heart center. It's being pumped by the blood through the whole body. So the blood carries the spirit. So the heart pumps the blood. Yeah, and then the heart, uh, so the, the heart energy, we have the, the form, the heart itself, that pumps the blood, and we have the formless the energy of the heart and the heart is such a special organ because it's it's really uh what what facilitates healing in the body and the the formless type of energy yeah the formless energy of the heart is joy and love and compassion yeah, and if we cultivate that from within we we are in a state of of health and healing so uh the heart is uh is connected to fulfillment it's connected to fulfillment and uh, it's connected to fulfillment when your spirit is high. Yeah, when, you're, when your spirit is alive and you see it, we say through the person's, the spark in person, the person's eyes, you can see uh, the complexion of the skin should be kind of rosy. Yeah, there's blood. The blood is being pumped through the system. And so if people feel depressed, their, their color changes, yeah? And uh, like, yeah, a happy, calm heart is what we want to connect with. It's very interesting because in Chinese medicine, we say that overexcitement is not good. Yeah, overexcitement, it's kind of like almost uh, anxiety. Yeah, so uh, being too happy is also like excited is being seen also as an imbalance of heart energy. So what we want to cultivate is happiness, but calm tranquility yeah this point in the chest center right it's called cv17 conception vessel this is the conception vessel that goes on the front of the body and number 17 it's right here in the center of the heart yeah so for men it's got right between the nipple line and then for women it's going to be between the fourth and fifth intercostal space and this point's called the sea of tranquility yeah so tranquility uh, the sea of tranquility is what associated with the heart energy. Uh, 
So uh, to press it is very good to re uh, kind of remove anxiety from the heart. Now the heart is, uh, is also, um, so the, the heart is also being seen as the fire element, right? So what, what important to understand in the summer, especially the summer month for this, it's hot, the heart is very active. It's very interesting because in the summer, most people that have problems with heart have it in the summer. So the heart is very active. It's very hot outside. Yeah, and the heart, we say, is the fire element. So too, too much uh, excitement or too much anxiety or too much stress with the heat, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> So, so what you want to do is really do, that's why in Qigong, all the practices in the summer is about calming the heart chi, grounding. Yeah, we have the, the ground is a very, it's a big yin, ocean of yin energy. And we want to connect with the ground. So walking, like taking a walk, hiking, slowly, pleasurely, doing things that are, are pleasant, are, that you love, like doing things that you love to, that are joyful and they also have some activity, physical activity to them is very good for the heart. So definitely not a intense workout. Uh, if it's really hot outside, it's not good for the heart or, um, or uh, you know, very intense workout or, or being stressed. So what taxes the heart really emotionally is, is stress or more, in Chinese medicine, we say being rushed, like being doing, like rushing all day, like moving from one thing to another, having too much on your to-do list, is is the most as the most thing that taxes the heart. Now think about it. The way to understand it from your experience level is to think about a time when the heart energy was open, like when you're in love. Just think about like making love with somebody, with your lover, just uh, remember a time in the past where you're making love. One, one thing that you notice is that there's a sense of like the time stopped to move or there's no sense of time or even sometimes there's no sense of space when you're fully immersed in. And people also feel it in not just by making love, but like you know, some people really love to you know, I love snowboarding, yeah? So when I'm snowboarding, sometimes there's these moments when I feel one with the mountain, right? This just this feel of transcend transcendence. And that's where the heart open. When you have no, um, you're in the flow state and you have no kind of like sense of time and space. And, uh, and when we are um, having a lot on to-do list and we always look at the clock, what time it is and what do I need to do? That's that's the opposite of that. That's having <laughs> the linear time is really ruling your uh, your day so much so that uh, yeah and and so um, schedule time, especially in the summer. We say the summer is the time to connect to like do something really fun that you kind of losing sense of time or space and just just taking a few hours and say I'm gonna. I'm just going to do this or do that. Something that you really love, that's really nourishing the heart. Uh, especially, especially if you can do it between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. That's the time slot where the heart energy is very active. So right now, <laughs> doing something that you really love, that really nourishes your heart, like, excuse me, like doing Qigong, doing something very nourishing would be, would be really powerful uh, would be really nourishing for the heart. And uh, most recent study, interesting, I'm just going to share with you uh, is a very recent study that came about uh, a lot of time people do things, you know, a lot of time when people are angry or they're stressed, they tell them, hey, go, go, go work out or go, <laughs> go do some physical activity. But now what they discovered is that if you do a physical activity when you're feeling angry or stressed out, you actually, you actually, um, the state of your heart is worse. So if, even if you like, let's say you're very angry and you go and you like, uh, if you're a kickboxer, you just go and, and work out, right? Or lift weights. When you're angry, it's actually worse on your heart. So what we, and, and that goes along with the Qigong, what we do in Qigong in the beginning, right? In the beginning of the class, we clear, we cleanse and clear. We want to, start exercising after we cleanse and clear 
negative energy. So we do grounding, we do tapping, we smile to the heart, we do all these activity beforehand to just relax. So when you do physical activity, do it from a place of fun and joy and not from a place of uh, letting out steam. Uh, this, this recent study showed that, that that's what it does. So that that's, uh, goes along with how we teach Qigong. We still, we first uh, purify, right? We first, ton uh, before we tonify, we still, what, inv what do we do? Invigorate and release, release negative energy because you don't want to circulate the, the negative energy. You want to cleanse and clear and then connect with your intention. What we do in the mi middle, we put our hands on the heart, what you'd like to invite in, right? And then we circulate and we circulate the good energy. So this is a little perspective on, on backed by science by why we do a certain technique in Qigong uh, you really want to move the good energy in your body. Uh, you don't want to circulate negative energy. So that goes along with, uh, it's almost like putting fire under the, under the anger. Like you go angry and then you go exercise. And what is it? It's fire, right? So you're putting fire under, under this. So it's kind of like that. Now the element that, that calms fire is what? Water, right? So water would, would calm fire. So all the exercise that has to do with, with relaxed flow, moving like a, like a wave, imitating water, relaxed movement, slow movement, would really calm down the heart, release stress from the body. Uh, so so that's, uh, that's, okay, so I think I, think I kind of talked a lot <laughs> for the time. And I wanna like see if you have just any question about this or about, um, in general, yeah, Edward, go ahead. You have to unmute yourself first, yeah. Here I am, unmuted. Okay. Okay. So uh, the bottom line is I want this to be an acknowledgement of you because I, I, give, I gave you a call this morning that my friend Chuck, who you know I've been dealing with and you've been helping me, he's a Cleveland Clinic experimental uh, chemo for uh, pancreatic cancer. So I've been working with him and late last night and now he and his daughter and they join chi breaks with you now oh, they want right. to do private sessions because i told them about the way chi breathing and and the healing that it does and right. what i what i want you to do is for everyone online is what you got me so enrolled with and you know i cured myself from a 480 billy rubin to a 280 billy rubin you know with hepatitis and bad fish and in the context of that you said to me, Edward, I can't believe it, but over a thousand people in front of me, cancer, Parkinson's, couldn't get a period for a year. All the things that you're doing for us in this Wei Chi breathing. And, you know, I took your six week course and I, I probably drink 10, 12 glasses of water a day too, before I even come downstairs. Yeah. In the <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this is who you are for all of us online right now with you. So I want you to repeat it so everyone hears Aww. all your clients and what you've done for them and what you're doing for us. Thank you. I, I really appreciate this acknowledgement. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, I really want this. Uh, I really want this to be more of a, a Q and like a really interesting. If you have any question to about, I, I I appreciate the acknowledgement, but I also want to open it to like a Q and A, like some uh question about the topic or about this and uh yeah I, I i love all this stuff and 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 you can all join this types of teaching i'm gonna i'm gonna go through just to kind of wrap up what what you say uh, you know we, we have three workshop coming up about sleep about lung health which the lung health would be about this way chi breathing is the first time i'm gonna kind of share it uh in a group in a workshop the first time i'm gonna I'm going to share that was uh, more like a one on one uh, thing that I did. It was the first time I shared in the group was with you with a closed group. But I'm going to share it in this workshop again, the lung health workshop. So I'm, I'm going to it's very, very powerful breathing. Thank you, Edward, for mentioning that. So I, I really encourage you to join. You can find it on under my my website under workshops and also um, and also uh, emotional resilience. That would be the third workshop. So it's just just three three workshops that I'm doing this summer that kind of like sum up immunity. And this is what we're doing in the Chi talk. We talked about sleep. We're talking about anxiety and emotional 
the stress and, how, and a little bit uh, uh, tools how to work with it. But really, we're going to get deeper in, in, in these workshops. So thank you. That, that's what I can offer if anybody wants to join on this ride. Uh, join the workshop. There's the first step, I think. Mm, yeah. Ellie, so, but I think it's very important, and I'll ask it as a question, what results have people got working with you <laughs> with, with the way she <laughs> breathing and with you know, what you've been doing, because that's an important question. <laughs> yeah, well, well, um, I've, you know, a lot, a, a lot of chronic health condition being, you know, it's, it's very interesting because what happened, okay, I'm going to talk about the lung. The Ellie, lung. Ellie, can I add, put something in here? Yes, of course. Because I think it's really important. I think it's a really important part of what you do. And and it's a result of the work that you do, but a quieter, the mind is quieted down with this work. And when the mind isn't agitated, you know, there's a, there's a, you can be present in your heart. You can be present in your body in a way that, you know, and which allows the rest of the work, the magic of the rest of the work. Um, you know, I, the breathing, if you're, if you're agitated, the mind, you know, I mean, I just, you know, in the morning when, when we do the, the knocking, you know, back and forth, right. I mean, it's just like, for me, it's like, you know, just that physical movement, my mind is starting to go, you know, it's like, it's coming back to center. It's coming back into my body. It's coming back, you know, and then we start putting our attention, you know, on the kidneys. We put our attention back. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, I don't know, there's a sense of calmness that once when I get started, I can actually feel that I can feel it. I mean, it's just like mm -hmm. it's it's just palpable for me. I can. Yeah. You know, and yeah. That, I think is like the very I think that's the most important thing. I mean, just, just like, wow. And then you're not thinking about, oh, I'm sick. Oh, I'm agitated. Oh, I'm you know, it's like, Wow. I'm feeling calm. I'm feeling mm -hmm. so present. exactly, and that that's beautiful, Dan. So let me let me kind of summarize it for in terms of like the work and how it heals people from chronic health condition. And some of I don't say that it's gonna it's it probably you know what what the breathing does, what this practice does, it really it it not only calms the mind, it gives you a different way of breathing. You know, usually people don't think that they're breathing wrong. But a lot of time when they get more oxygen, when they get more yin energy, more calm energy, the body starts to, because what, what is, uh, we, we talk about yin and yang, about fire and water and uh, pain, uh, cr even digestive system. I healed people, a person from a, from a Crohn disease, starting with this Wei Qi breathing, started from the Wei Qi breathing. So what, so you can say, hey, has digestive problems, a Crohn disease uh, related to the breath, why he just breathe differently and heal? Uh, yes. <laughs> and lower back issues, not all lower back issues, but I worked with a lot of people that heal lower back issues, but just by consciously breathing differently throughout the day. So that's types of energy, like how do we hold stress? A lot of time it's the unconscious mind the subconscious mind, we're not aware of the stress to, that we hold. We're not aware where it's being held. And, and these practices, when you do them every day, and sometimes you, you do them consciously all day long, here and there, are changing the patterns, the, the way the brain, the central nervous system connects with the body. It's changing it. Because you know, we know now that a person that has a traumatic uh, event in the past, from that point on, he's going to breathe differently. The breath changed. And if you want to change that breath pattern, you've got to relearn that. And you've got to do it again and again. And all the, uh, yeah. So it's, 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 in Qigong technique, you work with the body to change. You ch we work with the form to change the formless. And it's a very easy, tangible way. So you work with the breath, you work with movement deeper and deeper and deeper, and then things, things start to change. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing it. And, and uh, thank you for having me talk about how chronic health condition 
just change from like breathing technique. If you are adamant doing it every day, if you doing the right thing for you every day, and there's other techniques, of course, but, but things can happen. Magic can happen and miracles can happen. So, um, so thank you guys so much for, for that, for dropping the conversation. Cause I feel like it's, it's a way to drop the conversation a little deeper to really kind of talk about, about like, yeah, I, you know, a lot of people think, well, okay, I'm going to breathe. How is that going to change my, my pain? Well, it does. Well, it, it does and it can, and, and, and it has. And so, so, um, so the breath and other techniques like that would, would, I see miracles all the time. I see miracles all the times in my practice. And, um, you know, one of the biggest results were like a, a person that hasn't been sleeping, sleeping only four hours a night and on insomnia medication. And only after two weeks, he resumed uh, six, seven hours of sleep with no medication, two weeks. So that's pretty impressive. But he was very adamant. I have to say he worked hard <laughs> every day. He worked very hard. He did. He did. But you know what? He changed it and he still maintained it. So that's, that's very good. So he's not working every day now, or, uh, four times a week, three, uh, tapering on. But that's, that's what I do with people. Uh, th thank you. Uh, so just, just kind of a little bit of maybe a glimpse into like how, how I work with people. Uh, so is there any other questions? Any other question that we have before we close? Wendy, it's so good to see you. Any question about this topic? Yes. Okay. It's good to see you too. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah. Um, yeah. You said the blood carries the spirit. And um, I just got word from a friend of mine in Germany that he has um, cancer of the blood. And I'm wondering if you could speak to that connection connection between the blood and the and the spirit and the spirit and developing cancer in the blood in its yeah. relationship to spirit yeah so that's that's very interesting now one thing i want to say about that is that we we are not in healing in energy healing practices we we really don't do diagnosis like it's really hard to um at least i don't do it i know a lot of energy healing don't do diagnosis they just focus on healing. <laughs> Let's focus on healing. You put the energy of, you know, it's kind of like psychologists. We are like, uh, are we going to dig into the past or are we going to uh, see what we want to create in the future? So we kind of like seeing what do we want to create in the future in, in, in energy healing. So to say like, hey, why is this blood cancer, you know, or why any cancer? Is it is it because this or that, or is it because you were this, or is it sometimes it could be because of past life, you know, if you talk. So it's really uh, to, to look for the reason or for the, we, we don't do that. We just say, okay, how do we heal? <laughs> so that's, a, that's, a, that's kind of like a, a, that approach of energy practices and, and of, of Qigong. And um, you know the 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 blood carry the spirit, and uh, and the blood cancer. I have no idea. Like again, I don't want to know where why he got blood cancer. Is it connecting? Is it, you can say, oh, maybe he's have have problem with the heart with this with the spirit. No, I don't say anything of that. I don't know, and we we don't know, and who knows? <laughs> maybe it was a. Um, you know, it's, it's so funny that you're talking about blood cancer because um, on my mother's side, it's in the family, in the genome, this blood cancer. So all, all of my uh, mother, the, her father, so my grandfather on my mother's side, they all had the same type of blood cancer. So it's kind of like, it's interesting. It goes in the, in the family, in, the, in that area, the family. Again, you know, uh, how do we heal? Uh, you can, uh, from blood, blood, what kind of blood cancer is it? Multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma, yeah. So the kidney is associated with it. The kidney is associated with this is because it's a protein that created that over, it's a pro, uh, the blood produced too much of this specific amount of protein that changes the hemoglobin in the blood. Um, from 
from Chinese perspective, uh, you know, you, you, uh, you, he can see an acupuncturist uh, to, for, the, for blood yeah, and for kidney. So uh, from, from healing energy perspective, the Wei Qi breathing would be very helpful. Energies for uh, any, any practices for kidney, like bone breathing would be very helpful because the bone, the blood is being produced in the bone marrow. So any practices that connect with bone marrow, like ben, bone marrow washing would be really good. And you can find it on the winter sequence and on chi breaks. Like if he does the bone marrow washing breathing technique, that would be very, very powerful. Any kidney practices like in the winter sequence are gonna be very good. And uh, the Wei Qi breathing, all the, the uh, resilience uh, package on, on my uh, online under, under products on chiwithelli.com, the resilience package would be really, really good. So uh, oxygenate the, basically oxygenate the blood. The, the, the lung is the first entry point. So I always start with anybody that suffer from any condition. I start with the Wei Qi breathing. The one that I, I shared on this special group program that we did, and I'm going to share it again in the, in the workshop. So the Wei Qi breathing is a very powerful method and kidney practices, more Neigong practices. I, I'd love to, help the person if, if you want to try to do something with him, if he's willing to like uh, do some more stronger practices, like more one-on-one, -on -one, like daily, daily practices. Or, but in general, I would say, hey, look at the bone, bone marrow washing breathing, bone breathing, look at uh, energy for uh, practices for kidney energy and definitely lung. Lung practices, the Wei Qi breathing, uh, uh, different different uh, technologies to open the lungs. That makes sense. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah of course. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining for this Qi talk. Uh, so one one more thing I want to share about the heart energy, the heart processes experiences, life experiences. That's what the heart processes, and the heart seeks experiences. So we are here uh, from a kind of global perspective, how Taoism sees life or how like our life here is that life is a gift to be enjoyed. That's really it. And it's, it's, it's so wonderful. Life is here to be enjoyed. So if you look at the word enjoy, the word joy is there. And it's really this, this we believe in Taoism that the spirit came here to have a joyful expansion to really experience life and to do things that you like and you love. And when we do that, we feel good. We feel good when we do things that we, we connect with, we love. Uh, yeah, you're, 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 you heal through experiences. And talking about, by the way, cancer, I, I, I've read a lot of stories that people, people went on like because they gave him a few years to live, they went on a road trip or like a trip around and they did really, really what they wanted. They ended up... Uh, uh, either healing from the cancer or getting a much longer lifespan when they're connecting to what really they love to do and listen to their heart and really did their heart wish. And that's what we're here to do. And that's what this, uh, the, the heart is here to teach us. And to, um, to like, if, if that was the last day on earth, what would you really want to do? what you really want to spend your your energy with and arguing with people no and listening to the news probably not probably get on a bike and swim and and have fun and enjoy and talk with the friends and, and have inspiring conversation with people and that's really a state of health and healing because when we do that we sleep good because <laughs> you know? at night what happens is that we process what we did during the day. What do you want to process? You want to process something good and something uh, positive. You know, it's a bigger discussion because then you can say, well, what, what about this and that that happens or this news and that news? And, you know, we can, it's going to be good for another talk, but we can also talk about uh, how life events come to us and how we can respond to it. Like how, what, what determined the, the way we respond to life circumstances and, 
and uh, things that we cannot change. And, and this is really um, kind of like, it's almost like a bigger understanding of the energy, you know? I started to study Kabbalah, by the way. It's very, very powerful, you know? And they say, you know, that, you know, we cannot control outside events. And the reason that we anger or fear all this negative experience, all the negative emotion exists because we, we don't see the 99% the of the unit. We see only a very fraction. So we don't, it's based on ignorance. Like all these emotions is based in ignorance. And, it, and actually this is the place to put attention to. You know, they say put attention. And I love that. I put attention to what the, your triggers and look at them. And because these are the points where you can, when you can actually uh, do the, the fixing, the fixing your soul. Yeah, this is the, this is the places where you can actually gain wisdom and you can actually overcome them. So it's instead of not avoiding the negative, we're actually leaning in, which is really beautiful from a healing energy perspective, lean into the negative and, and watch it and look at it and, and transform it. So this is kind of like the emotional resilience uh, workshop that we're going to do later. So thank you so guy, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for contributing. Thank you so much, Wendy, Edward, and Dan, thank you very much. And let's close it with, with another meditation, if you will, just putting the hands on your heart and looking into your heart and smiling to your heart and just seeing what today, what experience today would be in alignment with this idea of joyful expansion. So looking into your heart, closing your eyes and looking into the heart and connecting with this idea of what today you can do, you can immerse in, maybe call a friend that you haven't talked with a while or make peace with some something or whatever comes to mind. How can you be, live the kind of like this beautiful rule of being here as a, a gift of uh, joyful expansion? Wow, very strong energy. I feel it. Thank you guys so much. Let's open the eyes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we're here to share these gifts with others. So when you feel good, you can, you have the capacity, right, to offer it to others uh, and be the leader of your life, but also help others. So this is uh, what we work with to be in service to ourselves and to another. All right. Thank you guys so much. It's been a blessing so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Lorraine. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.